Hi there, this is Mish from Pixel Perfect, and today I'm going to show you how to get the popular paint peeling texture effect on face in Photoshop. No matter what you call it, it is awesome. Now, it might seem complex, but if you follow the steps, trust me, it's very easy to do. So, without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in the mystical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download any of the photos shown in the tutorial, check the links in the description. So here we have our subject. Very nice, very pretty. Now, do you want the flower? Do you really, really want the flower? Let me just cancel the volume. That was crazy. So just crop it out. Press C for opening the crop tool. Okay. And let's crop it from the bottom. But before you do, make sure you click on clear button so that you're not restricted by any aspect ratios. Okay. Make sure you hit the clear. Make sure there's nothing over there. And then you just crop it from the bottom. Now, here's a tip. If you want to crop it from the sides and if you crop it from one side, it just crops it from one side. What if you want to crop equally from both the sides? You would hold the Alt or Option. That way you crop it equally from both the sides. Isn't that awesome? Now, hit Enter or Return once you're satisfied. Now let's zoom in and let's apply that texture on one side of our face. All right, to do that, let's bring in the texture. It's available for you to download. Check the links in the description. Now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my finder and just drag this texture. This is the paint peeling texture. Just drag it and drop it over the image, over the canvas, not over here. It will open up in another document over here. All right, just drop it and we're good to go. Now you can adjust it the way you like it. I'm going to make it larger from the sides. Okay. Now to be able to adjust it nicely, here's what I would suggest. Hit enter or return. Let's change the blend mode or simply decrease the opacity to see the image, to see the subject. So I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. Now you can clearly see where it would fit. So I'm going to place this crack that you see right here. I'm going to use this as the eye, right? So I'm going to place it over the eye. And if you want to make it larger and smaller from a certain point, here's what you can do. Press Control or Command T. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on it the anchor point you see the anchor point it goes over there now if you hold the shift and option together shift and alt on a windows it becomes larger just from that point isn't that an amazing trick so i'm going to keep it at that i'm happy with this and once i'm satisfied with this thing i'm going to hit enter or return now let's make a copy of the subject layer because we're going to be modifying it in some way or the other and we want to have the original backup right so Select the subject layer, press Ctrl or Command J. And we can name it, just for convenience sake, Subject Modified. All right, something like that. Now we need to mold the texture according to the face. At this point, the texture is flat, right? Now we need to just curve it, mold it around the nose, around the eyes, right? So how to do it? First of all, select the texture layer and then make sure it is a smart object. If that has a logo like this around the corner, it is a smart object. If it doesn't have that symbol, then you will right click on it and select convert to smart object. This is already converted to smart object, so I don't need to do that. Next, we'll go to liquify, filter, liquify. Now, if you're not seeing anything like this, probably you need to check show backdrop. So by default, it is checked off something like this. You need to check it on because we want to see the subject. Now you would select, what do you want to see? I want to see all the layers, layer zero, subject modified. What do you want to see? Let's see layer zero, which is the original subject layer. Do you want to see it behind or in front? I want to see it behind and you can decrease the opacity of it, of the texture if you want to. So I'm going to keep it at that. This is just for visibility. Okay. It's not going to be the final result just to help you see better so that you can mold better. Select the forward warp tool and then make the brush a little smaller. Make sure the pressure is low, 14-ish is fine, and start molding it around the nose and other parts of the face. So slowly and gradually nudge it, and I'm gonna shape it along the eye. This shape that you see, you can take as much time as you like. The more time you take, the more realistic it's gonna be. See how I'm molding it around the eyebrows? Now, some of you might be thinking, why am I just not using the distort function? Well, the distort function is automatic and just like any other automatic stuff, it just doesn't do as good as humans, right? Sometimes it does, but in this case, it doesn't. Humans are better at 3D perception in this case, as far as Photoshop is concerned, especially the distort function. Maybe in future, we'll have a better machine learning system, something like that, but now, 
we'll have to deal with this. Think of it like this. Now you see four fingers in just this area. What if I turn it a little bit? Now you see four fingers in just this small area. It's just like that. When you have texture folded around the corners, you'll see more of it. In front, you'll see less of it or bigger version of it. Okay. So we have to compress it around the corners, around the edges, where it folds, where the face folds. Don't worry about the outside areas, just the inside, because anyway, we're going to mask it away. You're just going to keep it on the right hand side, so don't worry about other areas. Just worry about the right hand side. Around the nose, now we're going to zoom in by pressing Ctrl or Command Plus. Now this is the time of fine adjustments. So let's start from the top. This area is okay, this area is fine, looks fine. Don't worry about the area under the hair, it will be fine. Just make the area around the eye a little stretched. It looks okay, let's zoom out a little bit. I zoomed in too much, it looks all right. Now once you're ready, once you're satisfied with all this, you can take your time to do it as much as you like and I'm gonna show you the final result. But right now I'm gonna just hit okay, all right? Let's have a look, now it's so nicely molded and looking so nice on the right hand side. Now, all we need to do, let's just limit it to the right hand side. And how can we do that? Simple, create a mask. Click on the mask button now. What does mask do? It hides stuff and shows stuff on certain areas based on what you paint in the mask. So white are the areas which it shows and black are the areas which it hides. So if we create a mask, click on the mask button, all of it is white. You see all of it. Now if you take the brush with the foreground color black, make the brush a little bigger and if you start painting, it erases or hides those areas. If you want it back, you will paint that area in white. So change the color to white by pressing X to toggle between the foreground and background and get it back just like that. Now what I would suggest is, let's delete the mask again, let's do it again. To create a completely black mask, instead of having to create a white mask and painting black all around, hold the Alt or Option and then create a mask. That way you create a black mask already. Now you can take the brush with the white, just paint on the areas where you want the texture. This area, don't be super accurate at this moment. We don't want it on the lips because it will make things complex for us. Okay, press X to take it to the black. And again, you don't have to be accurate, just paint over the areas. Okay, leave a little gap. Don't worry about the outside. Just leave a little gap. Okay. It looks okay at this point. Now, we will refine it later. Don't worry about it. Just worry about the color and the toning and the matching and all that stuff as of now. Now, I think it's very dark. And also, it is having a little bit of color to it. Let's first of all remove all the color from it. So, how can we make sure all the color is removed? Well, there are lots of ways of doing it. And I'm going to show you one new way today. Go to Image, Adjustments, and then Hue Saturation. Whoops, the Hue Saturation is not available. It's grayed out. Why? Because the mask is selected. Make sure the layer is selected. And then go to Image, Adjustments, and then Hue Saturation. Take the saturation all the way to the left to make sure there is no color in it. There was no color in it, but just to be sure we did it. And now, it's too dark. It's very dark. Let's add a Levels Adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose levels. Now, as you can see, the blend mode is multiply. We chose multiply. What does multiply do? Multiply makes things darker. It hides everything which is white and it keeps everything which is completely black. And it makes things darker at the same time. So, the whites in the paint were not completely white. That's why we see a little bit darkness here. What if we make it white? So we created a Levels Adjustment layer. Now this is the slider which makes bright things brighter. So we can use this to make the whites which are not as white, completely white. So now that we apply it, it affects the entire image. We don't want that. We just want it to be applied to the texture. So click on this button, Create Clipping Mask button. That way it's limited to just this texture. Now let's apply it. It's too much, it's blowing it away. We're going to be happy with probably this number. I'm happy with this. Let's stop it at that. Okay, 
Now what we want is a little bit of shine and a little bit of paint texture just in that area. And to be able to do that, if we add a levels adjustment layer, let's just go ahead and add a levels adjustment layer. If we try to do anything, it's gonna affect everything. And so here's what I would suggest. Let's just delete it. Make a group of all of it. The levels, the paint peeling and everything. Let's make a group of it. Select the subject modify. Hold the shift key, select the topmost layer. Everything in the row is now selected. Then press control or command G. Now it is inside a group. Now, take the mask and apply it on the group. Don't just limit it to this thing, just replace it. Just drag it and drop it on the group. Let the group have the mask. Now it works so much more better. And here's why. Let's just apply a levels adjustment layer. And this is not a clipped one. This is inside a group. Now, if you just do it, it's gonna affect just that area. So we're gonna bring it a little bit to the left, just like that. Now it looks amazing. Now if you zoom in, have a look at the texture. It still has the texture of the skin. We don't want it. We want it to just have the texture of the paint and to be able to do that, we need to remove the skin texture. And to do that, select the subject modified. As I said, we have to make some modifications. So we need to have a backup layer zero. Select the subject modified and then convert it into a smart object. Go to filter, convert for smart filter so that any filter that you apply from now on, you will be able to change the values later. Hit OK. Now go to filter, blur, surface blur, not Gaussian blur, surface blur. Take the threshold all the way high. Let's, let me bring it right here. Take the threshold all the way to 255. And decrease the radius to one. Keep on increasing the radius and stop just at that point where all of the skin texture goes away. So we still see some of the skin texture. I'm gonna go a little more forward, six. What about more? Let's go down and see. Yeah, most of it is gone. I'm gonna go a little more. Okay, now as you can see, along with the skin texture, the definition around the nose is also gone. How can we get it back? You see, that's where the threshold kicks in. Now we will decrease the threshold, slowly and gradually, and stop at the point where skin texture begins to show up. See the nose definition coming back? If you go too much, the skin texture will also show up. See the nose totally came back? but we don't want the skin texture to come back. If you go too much, see skin texture coming back. We don't want that. We just want the nose texture to be back. See, the nose definition, sorry. Let's increase it 26-ish, that's fine. Let's see. All right, this looks okay. See the edge of the uh, ear, sorry, the edge of the ear is also defined now. If we had applied Gaussian blur, it would have blurred out. We don't want that. Hit okay. It looks totally amazing, doesn't it? It is time for us to remove the extra textures, but before we do, let's do some fine adjustments. I think it's too much more brightened, so let's go back to the levels and double click on the symbol to open up the properties and then let's adjust it. I think it was too much. Let's decrease it just a little bit to this point. I think it's okay. Now this is something which you need to come back to and adjust. All right, it looks all right. Now, Here's an important adjustment that we need to make. When we remove the texture, at that point, we want a little bit bump. And to be able to do that, we need to extend the face a little bit on the right hand side. It will make sense later. So all you need to do is select the subject modified again and go to filter and this time liquify. Okay, now let's zoom in, control or command plus looks crazy I do understand that outside the borders canvas it will look crazy if it's an extended image now you need to extend it a bit just a little bit you can choose not to show the backdrop if you don't want to but I'm gonna check it because I want to see and compare just extend it a bit if you want you can choose to extend this as well and I'm okay with this, hit okay. Now, why did we extend it? It will make sense. Now let's zoom in and go back to the mask, okay? Take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black because we can hide stuff. 
make sure you have the soft round brush selected, opacity and flow at 100, because this is the brush we can make it harder, softer, smaller, bigger very easily. So let's make it smaller. And again, let me remind you the shortcut. You can hold the Alt key on Windows and hold the right mouse button and then drag it to the right to make it bigger, drag it to the left to make it smaller, drag it up to make it soft, drag it down to make it hard. On a Mac, you would hold Control and Option and with the mouse button, drag it right, left, top, bottom. It does the same thing. Okay, make the brush smaller. Let's start from here. And for areas like this, you can decrease the flow and do it gradually. What I would do in this case for just areas like this and for the edge, we will have to use the soft round brush with the opacity and flow at 100 and time to time, you might have to make it hard. But for this area where we need to have soft transition, we can select something like, and this is just for tablets, we can select soft round pressure, opacity and flow. And you can easily make that brush very easily by going to windows, I was a bit distracted, windows and brush settings, go to transfer and set opacity jitter and flow jitter control to pen pressure, okay? If you don't have a pen, you will select the first one, soft round and just decrease the flow, okay? Let's still decrease the flow even if you're with pen and without pen on mouse, you would decrease the flow to something around five, three percent, something like that. And then start working on it, start painting on these areas slowly and gradually. Try to keep in some of the texture to make it look natural. I'll increase the flow a little bit, maybe 200, to make the work a little faster. What are we doing right now? We are actually hiding the areas by just painting over them in black. Black hides and white shows up. And if you want to bring something back, press X, change it to white. Let's bring it back, something like this, and then work on it. See, this looks so nice that suddenly it comes up and just breaks through that area, right? Sometimes a distraction, distraction like that is necessary. Let's bring this back as well and we can erase the other extra areas. Make sure the cracks are well defined. Even here, the cracks should be very well defined. Now, any place it doesn't look nice, you can remove that. For example, in this area, I don't kind of like it. So I'll just remove it from that area. I really don't like it so much, so I'm going to remove it totally. It looks all right over there. I want to bring definition here to these areas. Looks all right. Now what you need to do if you are still using a tablet, if you're using a mouse, don't need to worry about it. But if you're using, using a tablet, you would need to use the soft round brush, flow and opacity at 100. Now it's time for us to erase these out, the extra ones out. And that's where we needed the extension. Now you can easily remove it according to, now we need to make it a little harder, just like this. Drag it down to make it harder, right? Now when you erase it, You'll see why I asked you to do that. You see, you don't have to erase it in the shape of the face. You have to erase it in the shape of the texture. Now you can maintain all those bumps the texture might have. See the bumps that I put there? You can have a little bump of your own. All right. Now let's erase the extras from the bottom. We had extended the face to be able to remove those and add our own bumps over there. You can remove the excessive extras now and we can refine them easily later. Now zoom in and let's refine those. Make the brush smaller. And think how it would look if there were actual texture on the skin, just like this. 
See how I'm gapping over there? You can have small gaps like this. Even in this area, you can have a small gap. See how real it looks now? Small gap here. Looks like it was really broken. Try to have a small gap, see what happens there. Looks good. Maybe have a small gap here. But that looks really bad because that area was not extended. Oh, now we got a huge crack. We can take advantage of this. Take it all in just like that and take it out. And now let's paint out. The idea and the secret of getting great results is in the details. If you pay attention to the details, obviously your results will be great. Now if you want, you can choose not to have this texture on the ear, but I like it. it looks really horrific. Horrendous. I don't know what the word is, but it looks good. Is it the word? I don't know. Let's just go on. All right. We are pretty much done over here. And do we need it on the hair? I probably don't. Let's make the brush a little softer and just remove it from the hair. We don't want it. I don't want it on the hair, but if you plan to do something with the hair, you can choose to, but I don't. Be careful while getting the hair back. Okay, zoom out and have a look. Wow, this looks totally amazing. At this point, if you want to add some extra texture to it, you can also add a curse adjustment there. And play with the values. Okay, that looks amazing. Now, what about doing some dodging and burning to really make it stand out? What is dodging and burning? Dodging and burning, as I explained before in other videos, is brightening and darkening certain areas of the image to add dimension to it. Now we just added a flat texture. How about adding some dimension? Okay, so add a curves adjustment layer and take it down. Today, we'll just do burning because it's already very bright and we'll just do darkening. Burning is darkening, dodging is brightening. So let's darken it up a little bit just like that. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. It totally inverts the mask. Then simply take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white and then again, tablet people, select soft round pressure opacity and flow. If you don't have this brush, set the opacity and flow to pen pressure and mouse people, all you need to do, you need to select the soft round brush and simply decrease the flow more than the tablet people. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it at around 10. And mouse people, you can use two or three. Start painting with white on the areas that are facing away from the light. For example, the light is falling from here, from the top. Here, it will be darkness, right? Any area that is facing away from the light, you'll darken it. Or any area which is already a little dark, you'll darken it. So to bring out the nose, we'll make this area a little darker. Also, the sides. Wow. Now that is something, isn't it? Right? So let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. It might look strange now, but there's one more effect to be applied. It's too much here, I guess. All right, looks good. Now, let's give this image the finishing touch. And this is an advice that I always give in all of my compositing tutorials. Whenever you bring two things together, at the end, apply a global effect to make them one. So here we brought in the texture and to make the texture and the subject one, let's apply a global effect and it can be anything. It can be a simple curves adjustment layer, but applied globally. That means to everything or it can be a color lookup table, right? So let's go ahead and create a color lookup table at the top, all the way at the top and select something called foggy night. Have a look at this. Isn't this totally awesome? Now you can decrease the opacity because I think it's too much. 
and have a look. Amazing, right? Here's the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. And there you go. And if you want, I think it's too saturated. If you want, let's go ahead and add a hue saturation adjustment layer inside the group. So let's go ahead and add that and decrease the saturation. Just a little bit, 15. And come back to the color lookup and you can decrease or you can totally take it away or have a little bit of it. Probably have 65 and that looks amazing. So here's the before and here is the after. So that's how to apply the peeling paint texture effect on the face in Photoshop very easily. Just a quick little recap. First of all, bring in the subject, bring in the texture, change the blend mode. In this case, we chose multiply, mold the texture, adjust the texture, mask it, and then at the end, apply a global effect. I know there are lots of adjustments in between, but at the end, they're just adjustments. Now, according to your texture, the adjustments might change, but the basics will remain the same. So what are the basics? Let's have a look at it. Here we have the original subject, and then we made a copy of it, and in the copy, we'll make all the adjustments, the modifications. And on top of it, we have the texture, and blend mode is crucial, the blend mode you choose. In this case, we chose multiply because we wanted to darken the cracked areas and the cracked areas were dark, black, and multiply is a blend mode which darkens stuff and it hides the white areas. Other areas were painted in white in the texture. So multiply worked for this case. If you want to know more about blend modes, check out this video. And then we made some adjustments to make it bright and dark and at the end, we applied a global effect to make it one. And that's pretty much all for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel in Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all your support. If you want to know more about Patreon, check the links in the description. Thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.